Welcome. Please stand as you are able and join with us in singing, Come All Christians Be Committed, which can be found in your program. of Jesus Christ be with you all. We come together to praise God, to hear the Holy Word, and to seek for ourselves and others the power, presence, and direction of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God, with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you gave to your apostles many excellent gifts. Give your grace to all the servants of your church. Ministry is the work of God done by the people of God. Through baptism, all Christians are made part of the priesthood of all believers, the church, Christ's body made visible in the world. We all share in Christ's ministry of love and service for the redemption of the human family and the whole of creation. 
Therefore, in celebration of our common ministry, I call upon all God's people gathered here. Remember, you are baptized and be thankful. To those who are being licensed, please remain standing and everyone else may sit. Who presents these candidates to be ordained, recognized, commissioned, and licensed? We have recommended them in our local congregations. We present them with our prayers and support. We have examined these candidates according to the standards of our discipline and this annual conference of the United Methodist Church. We present them with our prayers and support. We present these persons for licensing as local pastors. We present them with our prayers and support. These persons are by God's grace to be commissioned as deaconess or licensed for set-apart ministry in Christ's holy church. Those authorized by the church to inquire about them have discerned that they are persons of sound learning and of Christian character, possess the necessary signs of God's grace, and have demonstrated a profound commitment to serve Jesus Christ. Therefore, they believe them to be duly called to serve God. We ask you, people of God, to declare your assent to the set-apart ministry of these persons. Do you trust that they are worthy by God's grace to be ordained, recognized, commissioned, or licensed? We do. Thanks to you, God. Will you uphold them in their ministry? stand for the reading of this scripture. Our scripture reading comes from the prophet Jeremiah chapter 1 verses one, uh, 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Oh Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy. 
For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint, in, I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plan. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Speak to God. Please be seated. Yes, God knows my name. God knows my name. God knows my name. Oh, how God walks with me. Oh, how God talks with me. Oh, how God tells me I am God's own. You know my name. You know my name. You know.
Can you walk with me and talk Ooh, with me? Hallelujah. God knows our name. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I said to my executive admin, Mrs. Terry Biggins, this is the first time that I've preached since the pandemic with people. I've been preaching to a screen, so y'all hold on to your seat. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, first of all, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the music that have already gone forth, yes, to set the tone. God, your word tells us that we must worship you in spirit and in truth. And so, God, we thank you. God, we come today for our commissioning of our deaconess and our licensing of our local pastors. We thank you, Lord, for their family, their friends, their colleagues, we thank you for the District's Committee of Ordained Ministry, the Board of Ordained Ministry, all the folks that have touched and poured into their lives for them to be here today. And so, God, we say thank you. We thank you for the clergy and the laity of this conference. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You all know my tradition is that you look at your neighbor, so we hadn't done that in a while, so I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the called, the commissioned, and the committed. My sisters and brothers, by a show of hands, how many of you know that you are called? Amen that you are called by God for a purpose. And how many of you are commissioned for the lifelong work of love, justice, and service? And then how many of you are fully committed, fully committed to serve the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul? If you're fully committed, raise your hand. And see, today I would like for you to remember these three words, called, commissioned, and committed, as we examine the text for today. Dr. Norman Habel, an Old Testament scholar, believes that a call, say a call. A call is a summons by God to carry out a particular function. And interestingly, Dr. Havel believes that there are four stages in a divine call that is commonly displayed throughout the biblical stories. He also suggests that the call upon our lives is a direct correlation to these stages. Dr. Havel believes that, first of all, that there is what he calls a divine confrontation by God. This could be you hear a small voice. It could be a dream. It could even be an unctioning of the Holy Spirit, which is leading you to do something. For example, start a ministry, teach a class, maybe even start a business. Havel says, secondly, there is the rejection of the call. And this rejection comes with where you wrestle, you wrestle with God of what God has revealed to you. Oh, too often at this stage, we will say things like this, God, you couldn't mean me. God, I'm not educated enough. God, I don't know enough about the Bible. How about God, I'm too old. Mm. God, I'm even too old to go back to school. Thirdly, Habel states that there is then the assurance or reassurance in this stage. And in this stage, God affirms that God will be with you always. And then finally, Habel says, there is the acceptance of the call. And how many of you realize that finally after you wrestle and you ran for a number of years that you finally said yes to God? How many said that? Yes. And the acceptance of the call, which leads to various responses as we witness today. 
licensed ministers commissioning deaconess or home missioners or ordained elders or ordained deacons. See, beloved, I believe that everyone in here is called by God. I believe that God has a calling on individuals, ministries, and churches. I believe that God is constantly at work around us. God accomplishes this work throughout the Bible of Christ Throughout the, by, throughout the body, excuse me, of Christ by communicating God's will and inviting us to join in God's activity in specific ways. See, I believe that when we hear God's call and we respond appropriately, there is no limit to what God can and will do through God's people. Can I get an amen? The Apostle Paul writes in in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, NIV translation. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. See, sisters and brothers, we are called as believers of the faith to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are called to serve rather than to be served. We are called to help the downtrodden to improve their quality of life. We are called to stand up and fight the injustices of poverty and homelessness and racism and sexism that we face daily. We are called to be ambassadors for Christ, not only to read and study the Word of God, but to live and apply the Word of God. Can I get an amen? When we examine the text found in Jeremiah 1, we see that the God of Israel is calling. He's calling the prophet Jeremiah to speak to the people of Judah for their idolatry, their unfaithfulness to the covenant, and their obstinate disobedience to God's will. God reminds Jeremiah in verse 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were even born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. And what is so powerful to me in verse 5 is that God is confirming God's calling of Jeremiah to a prophetic ministry. And he's confirming this by indicating that number one, God formed and knew Jeremiah. Number two, that God sanctified and ordained Jeremiah. And three, that God called Jeremiah before Jeremiah was even born. See, God is revealing to us in this text that God's hand was on Jeremiah's life before the foundation of the world. What am I saying, Bishop? I'm glad you asked. Before you said yes, God was already shaping and forming you. In the Hebrew text, the Hebrew word for form is yashar, which means to take shape. And the Hebrew word Word for new is yada, which means to recognize or to know intimately. What are you saying, Bishop? I am saying that we must come to understand that before we were even born, before you came out of your mother's womb, God was shaping you. God was shaping you, molding you for God's purpose. God knows us all intimately and intricately. What are you saying, Bishop? To know, to know someone intimately means that you have a personal commitment and stake in the relationship. God knows every detail. God knows every nuances about us. What am I saying, Bishop? God knows the color of your eyes or even the color of your contacts that you're pretending to be your eyes. God knows your hair. God knows your size. God knows your smile. God even knows your laughter. God took the time to form each of you precious in the sight of God despite our faults or even our frailties. Interestingly, Jeremiah resisted the call just like we do. God has called you, and you run, and God keeps calling you, and you keep running. And then all of a sudden, 
you have to stop. Jeremiah resisted the call upon his life at first. He wrestled with God about his age. Now, how many of you wrestle with God about your age? God, I can't do this. I'm too old. They will pick at me if I sit in seminary or if I'm in course of study. But do you realize that when you refuse to learn new things or refuse to be stretched, we hinder our growth and even hamper the ministry that God is entrusting you with. See, what I like is that Jeremiah may have made excuses, but God was stretching him, and God will stretch us out of our comfort zone. See, I am glad that God doesn't listen to our excuses or even our whining. And as we examine verses 6 through 8, God responds to Jeremiah, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. See, beloved, rest assured, as God calls, God will equip. As God calls, God will empower. As God gives the vision, God gives the provision. See, I just want to let y'all know that age or education has nothing to do with your call. Come on now. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things for the kingdom of God. Look at Moses, look at Rahab, look at Samuel. Ordinary people, look at us. If you would have told me several years I would have been a bishop, I would have been like, yeah, right, amen. Secondly, in the text, Jeremiah is first commissioned. And in verse 5, he is commissioned for his task, and the essence of his ministry is reassured by God. What I am saying to you is anything that you are doing for God will be reassured by God. It is reassured by God that God will put God's word in the prophet's mouth. In the text, the prophet's vocation was given to him before he came forth from his mother's womb. The other aspect of Jeremiah's commission is found in the sequence of the first person verbs that describes the matter and the intention of the Lord. What are you saying? The text says, I knew you. God is speaking. I knew you. I consecrated you. I set you as a prophet to the nation. And what I'm trying to say is when God says, I know you, Amelda, I know you, licensed local pastor, I knew you, and two things are implied. That knowing in the sense of choosing and knowing in the sense of watching over you and caring for you as God did with Jeremiah. What am I saying? Rest assured that God chose each of you. God chose each of you for this time. God chose each of you for this uncertain time in our denomination. God chose each of you, as Susan Beaumont says, in this liminal time. And rest assured that God will watch and God will protect you. God further instructs Jeremiah in verse 10, see today I appoint, or as God would say, I commission you over nations, over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. But finally, Jeremiah is a wonderful example for us as committed, say committed, Amen. committed to serve the Lord. He served as God's prophet for over 40 years, yet the rulers and people of Judah did not listen to his many warnings. Jeremiah, as you know, was put in prison, thrown into a well, taken to Egypt against his will. Jeremiah was not allowed to marry. Jeremiah was rejected by family, friends, false priests, and prophets. How many of you all can say when you told folks you were going into ministry, they looked at you real strange and may have rejected you? 
Jeremiah even stood alone. And how many of times have you had to stand alone? He stood alone in his call for the people to repent and turn to God. He warned them several times of their impending punishment. Jeremiah, even though much of what he prophesied came true during his ministry, the people and leaders continued to ignore him. And through all the hardship and humiliation, he was forced to endure. But what I want to share with you is that Jeremiah remained obedient. Say obedient. Amen. Jeremiah remained faithful. Say faithful. Amen. Jeremiah remained committed. Say committed. Amen. And he was committed to God's call. Now, I know you're probably wondering how, Bishop, what does the call on Jeremiah's life have to do with my little life in 2021? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, the word commitment has three interesting definitions. Commitment is an agreement or pledge to do something in the future. Commitment is the state of being obligated. And then commitment is the state of being emotionally driven. See, commitment is a word that every church, every lay pastor, every pastor encounters. See, God is calling all of us to be fully committed to the work of ministry. But how many of you all know that with commitment comes a cost? How many of you all know that with commitment comes major, major sacrifices? What have you had to sacrifice for God's work? See, I once heard a story of a hen and a pig. And you may have heard this story. A hen and a pig. That one day this hen and pig approached a church to read the advertised sermon topic on the marquee. The topic for that Sunday read, what can we do to help the poor? Immediately, the hen suggested they feed the poor bacon and eggs. The pig thought for a moment and said, there's only one thing wrong with feeding the poor bacon and eggs. Hen, for you it requires only a contribution, but for me it requires total commitment. Think about it. Total commitment. The hen contribution of bacon and eggs, but for the pig, total commitment. My brothers and sisters, are you fully committed? Are you fully committed to this work? This work is not easy. It will have ebbs and flows. You will even cry sometimes for this work in ministry. Are you fully committed as our vision to be lifelong learners who influence others to serve? Are you fully committed to lead a life that is pleasing to God? Are you fully committed to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? Are you fully committed? Are you fully committed to be with the downtrodden? Are you fully committed to pray and preach the word of God? Are you fully committed to go and visit house to house? Are you fully committed? There's a popular song by Walker to Hawkins entitled Fully Committed. And the lyrics go something like this. All that I am. And all that I hope to be. All of my desires. And all of my abilities. The song says I'm, I'm fully committed, God. I'm fully committed to your will. I'm fully committed, God, 
to your way. The song even says, I'll make the sacrifice to do what you ask of me. My love's forever, Jesus. And the song says, God, you're all that I need. The song also says, and I could never repay what you did just for me. And what did Jesus Christ do for us? He died. He died on the cross for us to be reconciled back to God. And so the song says, the least I can do is I give my life fully committed to you. In ministry, you're not committed to man or woman. You're committed to Jesus Christ. In this work, what gets me up every morning is that I say, God, I'm committed to you. I'm not committed to the denomination. I'm not committed to man or one man, because men and women are fickle and they'll change on you. But I'm committed. I'm committed to Lord Jesus. Because the last time I checked, Jesus Christ is the only one that healed the sick. The last time I checked, Jesus Christ was the only one that raised the dead. The last time I checked, Jesus Christ was the only one that healed blind Bartimaeus. So that's who I'm committed to. I'm committed to Jesus. And I will tell you that in this work, sometimes you'll get disappointed, but I always come back to Jesus. Sometimes in this work, you'll have the rewards, but I still come back to Jesus. Are you fully committed? Amelda, you came all the way from the Philippines to bless us here in the Virginia Conference. That shows commitment. Licensed local pastors, you studied. You went to licensing school. You were taught by Brian and Lindsay. You probably didn't think, am I gonna pass this test? But you're fully committed. Why? Because you love Jesus and you love people. That's what Bishop Graves preached about yesterday in the commissioning and the ordination service. Do you love Jesus? We do this because we love Jesus and we love people and we want people to be better than even us. Are you fully committed? Are you fully committed?
in every situation and every bit of attention I pay I'm fully committed to your will and to your invite you all to stand as you are able as we reaffirm our commitment to our faith through the responsive reading of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. For the candidates, please stand. My sisters and brothers in Christ, you have been called to a new status in set-apart ministry. The church now confirms your calling. As commissioned deaconess or licensed ministers, you are to be co-workers with all the people of God, with laity and bishops and elders and deacons and local pastors, provisional members, diaconal ministers, deaconess, home missioners, supply ministers, with all who serve God in the church. Remember that you are called to serve rather than to be served, to proclaim the faith of the church and no other, to look after the concerns of God above all. 
so we may know you believe yourselves to be called by God and that you profess the Christian faith, we ask you, do you believe that God has called you to the life and work of commissioned or licensed ministry? Do you believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you persuaded that the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments contain all things necessary for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ and are the unique authoritative standard for the church's faith and life? Will you be faithful in prayer, in the study of the Holy Scriptures, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, continually rekindle the gift of God that is in you? Will you do your best to pattern your life in accordance with the teachings of Christ? Will you, in the exercise of your ministry, lead the people of God to faith in Jesus Christ, to participate in the life and work of the community, and to seek peace, justice, and freedom for all people? Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church, accepting and upholding its order, liturgy, doctrine, and discipline, defending it against all doctrines contrary to God's holy word, and committing yourselves to be accountable with those serving with you and to the bishop and those who are appointed to supervise your ministry? Will you, for the sake of the church's life and mission, covenant to participate in the life of the fellowship or membership into which you are commissioned or licensed? And you all say with me, I will, with the help of God. Will you give yourselves to God through this connection in order to sustain and build each other up? in prayer, study, worship, and service under the rule of life set forth in the vows that you take this day. May God, who has given you the will to do these things, give you grace to perform them, that the work begun in you may be brought to perfection. And we all say together, amen. Please be seated. For commissioning as a deaconess, Imelda de los Santos. Friend in Christ, we rejoice that you responded to God's call to servant ministry as a deaconess in the United Methodist Church. In your ministry, you continue a tradition of service that is as vital today as it was in 1888 when the office of deaconess was first authorized in the Methodist tradition. The call of God is always profound and our response can be no less extraordinary. In the varied ministries of love, justice, and service to which the Holy Spirit is leading you, you will testify to the infinite love of God in Jesus Christ. Such a lifetime vocation confers a great privilege. It also lays upon you a solemn responsibility. When you were commissioned as a deaconess in the Philippines. You publicly declared your commitment, your fully commitment to engage in this life work of love and justice and service and to assume its responsibilities led by the Spirit of God. You are fully committed to be diligent in prayer, in the reading of the Holy Scriptures, mutual relationship with the communities you serve, and in all other means of grace available to you. You are also fully committed to earnestly seek to carry forth your ministry, your call in sincerity, and in love under the direction of the church, to accept responsibility for participation in the mutually supported 
deaconess, and home missioner covenant community, and for a lifetime of loving and supporting your sisters and brothers as part of the world diaconate. Do you now affirm these commitments publicly in the presence of this assembly? I do so publicly affirm these declarations with God being my helper. Today we send you forth with our blessings and support. Please kneel as you are able. I commission you to the appointed ministry of Resurrection United Methodist Church on behalf of the United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Most gracious God, source of all mercies, anoint this your servant, Amelda, with your Holy Spirit. Enrich her with your grace and strengthen her for the tasks which lie ahead. May her labors glorify your holy name as she continues her daily work in ministries of love, justice, and service on behalf of the United Methodist Church. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. To the church gathered here and around the world, I present our deaconess, commissioned to a lifetime of Christ-like service, Christ-like service, under the authority of the church, thanks be to God. Let's give God some praise. Will the candidates for licensing please stand? The licensed local pastor is called to share in the ministry of Christ and of the whole church and authorized by the bishop to preach and teach the word of God, shepherd the local congregation, and faithfully administer the sacraments of holy baptism and holy communion while appointed to a particular charge. Do you believe you are moved by the Holy Spirit to serve as a licensed local pastor? Will you strive to live a life in keeping with what you preach and teach? Let us pray. Almighty God, may the grace of ministry rest upon these, your servants, and may the opportunity to serve them into the fullness of your calling. Bless them in their proclamation Bless them in their leadership, their care, and their mission in their communities. Equip them and encourage them that they may honor you with faithful service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For licensing as a local pastor, Paulette D. Almond. Joseph Henry Amend the Third. Evelyn Morrissey Archer Taminger. Lynn Marie Barber. Timothy Matthew Blake. Daniel Chun.
Tammy Cox. H. Ellis Crum. Elizabeth Lee Davis. Gary George Danette. Alyssa M. Densham. Nilsa Furtado Gilliam. Angeline Meadows Hoon. Betsy Taylor Hudson. Lacey Charles Hughes. Shin Kim James Arnold Lewis Michael Wayne Lewis. Michael A. Liskowitz. Mario Velez Lopez. Joseph Stanley Maslanka. Dennis Carter Morgan. Dennis. Isaiah Jennifer Park. Elizabeth W. Petrie. Well. 
Michelle M. Petway. Sub Song Jeffrey Michael Thompson. Philip Patrick Urban. be seated. Let us pray. We thank you, gracious God, for raising up among us faithful servants. Clothe them with your righteousness and grant that we with them may glorify you by giving ourselves to others. Amen. Before we sing our closing hymn, I first want to uh, recognize the musical brilliance that we are in the midst of. The closing hymn is written by our conference organist and accompanist, Dr. Rod Vester. He will lead us, and if you would allow me, Rod, to make a change in text, to say, right now, God, I commit to you. Uh, this is a very special hymn to me that I use in conferences all throughout the Southeast. Here I am, and I invite you to join us on that refrain of here I am.
you to stand with me. Let's try that together. for our blessing, with our blessing, the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. Go in peace to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do.